Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Yasha, if you're new here. And today we'll be talking about compensation in radiology or how much radiologists get paid. For whatever reason, this is kind of a recurring theme in my comment section and my DMs about how radiologists are paid. So, not how we're paid, sorry, we're not gonna get into that, but how much we're paid. Um, how we're paid probably relates to your geography and your RVUs and what you're doing and if you have grants and et cetera. And I just, we're not gonna get into that today but we can talk about how much radiologists are paid. And I do have some specific numbers in here, so if that's something that you're interested in, please keep watching. I mean, all of this information is from public, publicly available data, so it's not like I'm creating anything magical here, but since it's so commonly asked, I thought I would just make a video on it. Let's talk in general. So I think in general, let's just kind of make some broad strokes. First of all, everything is subjective in the sense that Every job is going to be different. Not every job in Boston is going to pay the same. Not every private practice in Boston, not every academic practice, and that goes for any city across the United States. So I'm making generalizations here. Obviously each practice is different in the way that they compensate their radiologists. So please don't you know, think that this is hard and fast for any, any specific practice. This is just broad generalizations. The two generalizations I'm going to make are, one, that academics usually pays less than private practice but you also have less volume pressure. And the second generalization is that bigger cities, especially on the coasts, tend to pay less than more rural areas and the Midwest. So you can kind of take with that, take of that what you will, but those are kind of some things to keep in mind when you're looking for a job. If you go to a place that's kind of in the middle of nowhere and they're really, really, they really need someone, they might offer a higher starting bonus, they might hire a better partnership track, they might have better benefits. And so um, obviously your overall compensation package is going to be a lot better than if you're in a, in a location where there is many more radiologists and less demand, less su more supply and less demand. And that kind of easily brings me to my next point, which is that salary is only one part of the compensation package, but you do have to look at everything else um, that includes benefits, so what type of insurance is paid for, et cetera, things like that. Bonuses, um, so whether that's a signing bonus and then also your incentive bonus at the end of the year. Your vacation, so how much are you really working for that salary, essentially. Any CME time that you have or also um, money, for example, like a fund. So that all goes into your benefits package and then of course retirement. So. This is only one part of the equation, but you do have to kind of evaluate everything when you're looking at how well you're compensated in a specific job. We're not gonna get into all of that, but again, these are just salaries and these are just broad generalizations. So you do have to look at all of those little things to really see what is the true compensation package someone is offering you. Okay, so I hope you guys don't mind that I'm looking down because I have a lot of this written out on my um, laptop. So let's see. The first thing to know is that radiology in general is compensated pretty well. If you look at the 20 highest or the 20 specialties with the highest annual average compensation as a as per doximity in 2021, um, radiology is up there in the top 20, where I think we're either 10 or 11 on this list. So that's pretty good. And the average here listed is 495,451 per year. So that's a pretty good salary on average for radiology. I would say in general, the salaries that you'll see for starting probably start anywhere from the 300s to the 400s. I think that's a good ballpark range for a salary um, coming out of training. Medscape also has a similar report from 2020, which showed the radiology annual salary being on average 427,000. And then something to also remember is the incentive bonus and they listed it at 77,000 on average. I think the incentive bonuses are actually higher in private practice than they are in academics. So that's another reason why, even though the base salary may be very similar in academics and private practice, if you are looking online, there's much higher, the benefits that you receive in private practice are going to be higher, and also the vacation you receive in private practice is going to be much higher. And like I said earlier, that's paired with more volume when you are working. So um, just on average, I think 300 to $400,000 range is pretty standard from what all of these reports are saying and you might have a pretty solid incentive bonus at the end of the year, especially if you're in private practice. Doximity in 2019 published kind of a map with average salaries across the United States. So this kind of gives us an insight into some geography things. 
this is obviously not just radiology this image but it does kind of show you the similar trends that you will see across all specialties radiology included as you can see especially on the east coast um, these are the areas with the lowest starting salaries so especially on the east coast it's pretty saturated there's a ton of hospitals out here a lot of them are academic and you're overall going to have a lower starting compensation than if you are in the midwest you can see the orange is really out on the east coast and then the green is really more in the midwest the west coast i'm not really sure how it works on the west coast i'm not gonna lie i don't really know the salaries out there but i would assume that it's pretty similar there aren't really enough bubbles here for me to judge whether it's really high or really low the cost of living out there in california is also a lot higher i guess it's pretty high out here too in new york and boston but um just you know these are generalizations right these are just in general and of course the further you go from a metro area usually the higher your salary will be because they really want to attract you to those jobs speaking of geography the mgma also publishes data you do have to pay for a subscription i was able to find this online um in terms of like more geographical stuff these numbers seem pretty high to me i'm not gonna lie like these are averaging 400 to 600 thousand which is really high i would say for starting salaries but this is what i found online so i will share it with you in terms of the east coast midwest um south and west coast so again kind of the like i said these are higher and you can see that the midwest is definitely in the highest range there but I don't know, these numbers seem a little bit too high to me. I would say that if you're coming out of training, you can expect to make between three and 400,000. And then of course, if you have incentives, maybe this is with your entire like compensation bonus, I'm not sure, then, it may, then this could really make sense. Um, private practice does get up into the 600, 700 plus thousand dollar range. So you can make a lot of money in private practice, but you have to be willing to work really hard as well. So. That's that, and then I will also share that there's another resource that you can use called the, H it's, it's basically data from the H-1B. I think it's from, they get it from the US Department of Labor. They also collect salary data, and I can share what I found there. I have commonly heard of something called the Harvard tax, and I think it's something that you end up kind of paying if you work at MGH or Brigham. Um, that's just what I've heard though. These are all things I've heard through the grapevine and also on the internet, not anything that I can 100% pinpoint. So please don't come at me if this is totally untrue. But based on the H-1B salary data, these were the starting salaries of radiologists at MGH and Brigham at, in 2021. So you can see it's a lot significantly lower than the 300 to 400s that I've been kind of quoting. If you look at Henry Ford in Detroit, much higher base salary, 414,660. Mayo, I've heard, pays really, really well. And you can really see that here with the 500 to $700,000 range. Um, Virginia Mason, just to get a West Coast option in there, was starting salary 400. And Cleveland, just to get another Midwest, was also 445,000. So I really think that in general, the ballpark of being 300 to 400 is pretty solid. And then in private practice, things can just go up from there. The longer you work for someone, if you're gonna become partner, things like that, if they own their machines, that will all contribute to your salary in some way. Um, but yeah, those are kind of like the main things that I wanted to share. Um, in terms of the gender gap, there's obviously, unfortunately, I, I wanna say like, that just kind of rolled off the tongue, but that just goes to show how like, a, you know, how much we just, assume that it's there, but there is unfortunately a gender gap in radiology. This one is just kind of a graph that shows between female and male physicians, but there was some sort of literature I saw that came out last year that showed that we um, earn like a million dollars less over our, over our careers than our male counterparts. So just to keep in mind, if you are in the process of negotiating a salary or someday if you remember this, like please negotiate your salary please ask what the salaries are of the partners that are that are in the group that you are joining. Um, I really think transparency is always key. But anyways, this isn't this isn't a video about contract negotiation. It's just about how much radiologists are paid. That's really all I have to say about the whole thing. Um, academics and private practice are very different in your expectations of your work. So I would say that there is going to be a salary difference there. Um, I, I will also say that I've heard that academics is getting more and more difficult to keep up with, like the volume is going up just like private practice. So before you sign anything or you look into anything or make any sort of assumption, 
do your homework on the practice that you're looking at, whether it's academics or private practice, see how much you're expected to read for that salary. In some cases, it might be totally like unreasonable expectations type of thing. So you do need to do your homework. But I think between the $300,000 to $400,000 range is a pretty solid number if you are looking to see how much radiologists make. And then it only goes up from there with volume and incentive and then whatever the remainder of your benefits package is. So anyways, hope this was helpful. I don't know, this is all stuff that I found online and just like, you know, word of mouth, things that I've heard through the grapevine from other people about salaries and stuff. But you can definitely make a solid living being a radiologist. I think it's a very, very good living that you can make. Um, but you definitely have to put in the work. It's not an easy specialty by any means, but totally worth it in the end. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm at MD on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you all on the next one. Bye.